Okay, so in this video we're going to go through the world camera script. I'm going to show you how that all works and we're going to go through some nice tips on uh, how to structure your code. And after that we're going to go through the complicated algorithmic parts of pathfinding in your strategy games. So how does the, the player walk around certain objects and how do they go to two different levels in the world space. But firstly let's get to this easier world camera script. So I'm just going to show you how it works firstly so we know what's going on. It's really simple to do. It's it's a system I designed to to develop the game and once we've finished developing we can improve it and make a really nice camera script. So I can control it with the W, A, S and D keys. I can also control it with my mouse when it hits a certain boundary. In this case it's 25 units from each side of the screen. The camera moves with the mouse. If we go over the screen the camera stops moving. That's really important if you're in web games. If you're on a web, web, web browser you scroll down and the camera will stop. And if I hold shift and move the camera it goes almost twice as fast. So if the user quickly wants to get to the other side of the, of the map and uh, that's the camera guys. So let's open our world camera script. So the first thing is um, I've designed the script to be ultra friendly to anyone who joins our team and they look, take one look at the script and they know exactly what's going on. So the first thing is to explain what your script does in the comment right at the top. So whoops sorry guys, the glow, only apple. Okay, so the script moves up and down, left and right, with the mouse and the W, A, S, and D keys, and it uh, it stops at certain limits or boundaries, so the side of the map. Okay, so we can hide this. Don't need it showing. The first thing is I've used structs um, to create a like a structure or a template or an ob of an object. So I've called this structure box limit. And we can define uh, objects or fields in this struct as many as we want. We can define game objects, vector freeze, or even our own objects in here to make a struct. And we've applied the struct to two variables in this in this game: the camera limits and the mouse scroll limits. And the mouse scroll limits are simply uh, 25 units, and that's what I was talking about earlier. When you go 25 units to the side of the screen, the mouse scrolls and um, the the camera limits are simply the limits the camera can move in 3D space. Okay guys, so I've organized my script in regions, really really in a nice way to organize your code. I've done it for the structs, the variables and right at the bottom I've got helper functions. So why have I got helper functions? Because I don't want to type in this code every single time I want to check if the keyboard buttons are being pressed and I don't want to type in this massive if statement just to check if the mouse is within the boundaries to the screen. So the helper function is a really nice way to, you know, a nice shortcut for your code. And um, another point, these are static functions as well. So uh, you can access these in any other script. You don't need to make an instance variable for the script itself. You can just type in uh, the name of the script, period, and the function name. Okay guys, I hope you understood that, static variables. Actually, let's show you how to do this. So if I wanted to call this function, are the camera key, uh, keyboard buttons being pressed? If I wanted to know that in my world script, I'd first you make like, whoops, an update function or something, first of all. And then you could say, if name of the script, world camera, and then the name of the function. So if it's being pressed, we can debug it or something. That's how you do it guys, so we don't need to make an instance variable with static functions. So that's that. And the actual logic of this script, okay, so at the start of the script I've just defined all the boundaries. On the update function, I've just basically called my methods and put the main logic in here. So if the user is pressing a key or you moving the mouse, we create a vector free for the desired position we want to move the mouse so and then we check if that desired position is over any boundaries and if it's not with the exclamation point if it's not we we move the camera so that is really simple so if someone joins my team and sees my script and they see this they will know exactly what's going on okay guys so keep that in mind after the update function is all our main logic Alright, so check if the camera is being moved by the keyboard, check if it's being moved by the mouse. Alright, that, that just checks if it can move or not. Get the desired translation. 
and another thing to mention is I've timed the move speed by a time delta time because uh, if we if we um, play this game on various computers they the processors have various clock speeds and uh, the amount of times the update function is called is variable relative to the time so it's called on every frame rather than every second so we times this by a time delta time to convert it just to just to um, uh, make the game smoother and it will run at the same speed on every single computer no matter what the clock speed is so uh, let's just go to the help, let's go to the scripting reference Unity explains it in a better way than I do guys so I think we should look at that instead just so you know what I'm talking about so okay let's do that and okay so time time delta time let's just do that and okay so if you add or subtract a value on every single frame the chances are you should multiply it time delta time and that's exactly what we have did here so the move speed is variable it we add or subtract it on every single frame where was it so when you multiply time delta time you basically say I want to move this object 10 meters per second instead of 10 meters per frame we want to do it time based so it's so it's smooth on every single computer consistent on every single uh, computer okay so checking if the key has been pressed to generate the move speed simple enough we return a vector 3 which is the desired move uh, translation and then the last function is the desired position over the boundaries we just do a few of statements to do that alright guys so as you can see it's really simple to make your camera script with regions and a struct for the box limits the, um, the start to define everything the update function just to just to store your main methods just to do the main logic and then you go into more detail in your methods below that and the helper functions really speed things up if you want to know this on different scripts and stuff so that's the world camera script so in the next few videos we'll dive into the pathfinding and some really good stuff there and build our game so thanks for watching the video guys